What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years' experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're going to perform a press on a very cool Silver Age UK price variant comic book published by Marvel Comics in 1965. It's exceedingly rare, with only one singular low-grade copy in the CGC census, and it also happens to be a square-bound comic book, so we need to proceed just a little bit differently from a normal clean and press on this project. Thank you sincerely for joining me today, and if you enjoy this video, please take a few seconds to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. In episode 1, we did an unboxing and I reviewed the History of Marvel Tales Annual as the first Marvel reprint series of the Silver Age, we talked about how this comic book is the very first reprinting of both Avengers No. 1 and X-Men No. 1, which were both printed in 1963, about two years before this comic book hit the newsstands. We discussed how UK price variants are first printings, and how they are estimated to be 20 to 50 times more rare than their US counterparts but often sell at a discounted price to U.S. versions of the same comic book. I shared with you that my goal is to submit this comic book to CGC in hopes of having the highest graded copy in the census. Specifically, we want to see if we can accomplish this goal on a modest budget with some good old-fashioned diligence and elbow grease. In Episode 2, we performed a dry cleaning on this square-bound comic book and found several foreign substances on the cover, as well as some good old-fashioned soiling and mild staining. After dry cleaning, it went into my humidity chamber where it sat for 24 hours at 98% relative humidity. I've created a playlist for this short series, so click the link to the playlist if you missed either of episodes 1 or 2 and want to check them out before viewing today's video. All right, so to press a square bound comic book, you can't just buffer it in the normal way. And we're going to make some measurements to inform how we're going to buffer this book. So there is no center fold, and the staples are actually in the top of the stack of paper. So I want to measure the thickness of all the pages here. It's about 173 and a half thousandths. And then I want to make that same measurement over the staple. So I'm going to place gently my micrometer over the staple, 178 and a half. So about five thousandths of an inch thicker right there. I'm going to measure it at the other staple location as well. And I get 172 and a half. So actually less thick there than it is on the edge. And that's not abnormal. Sometimes these staples will actually sort of pinch the paper so tightly. Remember this just came out of my humidity chamber. And these staples can pinch it so tightly that it stops it from absorbing water and sort of getting a little thicker. So not shocking. Those staples sometimes here on the back, we'll have a prong that sticks up a little proud, and I want to make sure they're both embedded really nicely, and I, by feel, can tell that those prongs are stuck down. So we're good to go. We don't have to press them down. If one of those prongs was high, I would press it down into the paper. So now we're going to buffer this book, and the way I do this, I use regular copy paper. This is 24 pound. Brilliant white. So this is, again, what you are all familiar with from your copy machine or your printer. And I'm going to start by placing one sheet between the comic and the back cover here. And this will go all the way in as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to count six pages in. And I'm going to take my next sheet, and I'm going to also press it in as far as it'll go. But what you'll notice is, because these interior pages 
are held together at the staple, that sheet can't go in as far as the first one did. Because it can't go past this staple here. And what that's going to do is start to build up the thickness of the book beyond the staple. So I'm going to go another six pages. Just marveling at Steve Ditko's work and some of these house ads that we get to see in this book. It's actually kind of a shame to slab it, but we have our goal. So I'm going to put another sheet there and then I'm going to go another six pages. So every six pages I'm just going to put one sheet of copy paper, Steve Gitko's origin of Doctor Strange, one sheet of copy paper just pushed in firmly, but obviously I can't put that much force because I'm just pressing against the stiffness of the paper here. There's that first appearance of the Ringmaster, another house ad. Now we're into the first story, which is the first appearance of the X-Men and Magneto, for that matter. Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Just push it in with using, again, the stiffness of the paper. And then it turns out on this particular book, it's an exact multiple of six pages. So this last sheet will go right here underneath the front cover. So again, that last sheet goes deeper in than all of the sheets in the middle did. Okay, so why have we done this? Why have we buffered the book this way? The biggest risk to pressing these books is to crushing that glued spine and pushing those staples through the cover. So what I've done is I've built up a thickness here. This is 208 thousandths. So the body of the book is now 30 to 35 thousandths of an inch thicker than the spine area that's glued together and where the staples are exposed. Now I'm going to set it up for my press. This is my aluminum plate, eighth inch. Let me put this sideways so you can see it better. This is my eighth inch aluminum plate. And on top of that, I'm going to put my stack, which is two magazine backer boards and then a 90 pound piece of cardstock. Then I'll put my comic on it. And you'll see what'll happen is the press now can't damage that glued spine and can't push the staples through. Here's my top buffer, two magazine backer boards, a 90 pound piece of cardstock. Because as it pushes down, it can only push, it can only compress as much as all those paper buffers that we put into the body so it can never get to the point of crushing the spine. I've seen other people do really esoteric things, putting stoppers in there and stacks of other things. I've never found any of it necessary. This is what I do right here. I'm using my Chinese press today because I don't want to put too much pressure, and this is easier to adjust for thickness. I find it does work better if you have a micronaut, just for good luck. 60 degrees centigrade is about 140 Fahrenheit, and I'm going to run it for about 16 and a half minutes, I think, is 999 seconds. I'm going to leave it in there overnight, and this is my comic book the next day. Let's have a look. Remove my top buffer. Seems fine. Don't have staples pointing out. I don't have a crushed spine. Those are normally what people worry about on these books. Cover seems to have good gloss. It looks like we reduced a lot of the wrinkling, crinkling, creasing, bending, etc. in the paper. I'm going to carefully remove these sheets of copy paper. They will sometimes stick a little bit, so be careful. I don't pull very hard. I tug them just a little bit. If they don't come out, then I'll open the book fully to get them out. You can see they've taken some of the humidity into them. They've developed 
some crinkling and here's the last one again I'm just gonna make sure there's no weight and nothing allowing it to stick to that back page certainly don't want to cause damage to the paper removing that buffer overall looks good like I said the spine is intact which is the main concern with these books surface gloss looks nice book looks relatively flat given the condition we started with yeah I'm not surprised I've pressed a lot of these books and I've never had any problems using this method so I think for those of you that have been asking this method works really well for those of you that want to try this technique you don't need the calipers to measure the thickness of the book I only use them to demonstrate for you what we're trying to accomplish you can adjust the number of sheets of copy paper that you use. One sheet every six pages is a bit conservative and will sometimes leave a few pressable defects along the spine. If that happens, simply cut the number of sheets back to one every eight pages of the comic or even one every ten pages and repress the comic book until you get the last pressable defects out of the spine area. All right, let's have a look at some stills. Here you can see... This book has improved quite a bit. It's cleaner, it's flatter, it's brighter. All around just has better eye appeal. It's definitely going to grade a bit higher. It does have those flaws that are going to keep the technical grade limited. Here in the side-by-side, -side, you can see, obviously, the befores on the left, the afters on the right. You can see how much soiling we removed. It's subtle, but the book on the right is flatter, brighter, presents better, is cleaner looking. On the back, actually, is where you see the most dramatic difference, again, owing to all of the white area on the back that doesn't have any ink. We removed a lot of soiling here and, again, flattened it and just made it present a lot better. It still does have some flaws that are going to hold it back a little bit, here you can see them, those rips along the top. But you can really tell on the back cover here, like look at the outside gutter next to the Liberty coin, how much cleaner that is and brighter on the issue on the right, and obviously the bottom gutter as well. Here's where you really see how well the press worked. The book is now nice and flat. Obviously it has some deep dings and dents, the truth is, we could probably improve those a little bit but by hand working them with tools, but they're not holding the grade back here, and I'd rather just not manipulate the book anymore. Side by side, you can tell it really is a dramatic difference, and the press worked phenomenally, and it is going to grade higher, and it is presenting much better. So this has given us our best chance at our goal. Here you can see on the front cover a dramatic difference with the press. Where the back had the most obvious improvement with cleaning, the front had more pressable defects and less white area, so it benefited more from the press. It presents much better now. And I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be able to hit our goal of highest in census. Here, again, when you see the two before and after images side by side, you can tell what a dramatic difference and improvement the press made and just how well this simple method of stacking with regular 24 pound copy paper works to protect the spine as well as give you a great press so what's next i'm really pleased with the outcome for this book and i'm going to put this comic in my growing stack of books for my cgc submission to the vintage tier We'll have to wait a month or two to find out if we achieved our goal of getting the highest graded copy in the CGC census for this very cool, rare, UK price variant of Marvel Tales number 2, the very first reprint of both Avengers number 1 and X-Men number 1. Navigate over to the Community tab for Liberty Hill Comics to participate in the quiz to guess what grade you think CGC will assign to this comic book. Stay tuned to the channel as I prepare a few more comics for this submission, and I have a few exciting Golden Age unboxings coming up soon as well. What do you think? Will we achieve our goal with this one? Let me know in the comments below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, take care of one another. Thank <laughs> you.